It's Bourbonite. It's a flight fight. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Sarah, we have uh, something a little experimental, something different. I like experimental. It actually involves math. Oh, no. No, no, come back, come back, come, come back, come back. This is the best price per proof. So the best bang for your buck. Best bang for your buck in a high proof area. Because value is something that you guys talk about, you like seeing on this channel here a like lot. Value. We love it too, because we got to buy bottles. So, you know, value. Also proof hounds. Woof woof. Right. <laughs> so we want to see how those can collide. Basically, can a low P3 rating, and we'll explain that here in a second, can that win out uh, of a higher, more expensive P3 rating? Okay, interesting, Chad. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have to break this one down for me. Do we have a formula for that? We do have a formula, and here it is. We're gonna use uh, an example of a bottle that's not in this flight, and we'll tell you why it's not in this flight. So this is Kirkland Signature Barton 1792 Master Distillers Single Barrel. It's $30 for a liter, so when you adjust that to a 750 milliliter price, that would make it $22.50. Now, if you divide that by its proof, which is 120, you get 0.1875 price per proof. Kind of hard to say, so we are going to abbreviate it to P3. So what you're saying, Chad, is that that one is 19 cents per proof point, or a 19 cent P3. P3, right? yes. Right, we're gonna use this language. Yeah, it's basically like, golf. You want the, the lower score mm. is, for this flight anyway, the better. And we'll see how that ends up. How does it taste? <laughs> this is a theory. Exactly. Now, the reason why we didn't put that one in this flight is because it's only available at Costco. We right. wanted uh, all of these to basically be, you could walk into any liquor store and have a chance. Within it. reason. Within reason. So for this flight, we only chose bottles that are 110 proof and above mm -hmm. because that's what we would consider high proof. Uh, kind of starts there. As proof hounds. <laughs> so don't leave just because you think this is for proof hounds only. No. Stay, stay and see what happens. Yeah. And see what see what's in this flight. All right, Sarah, what is in this flight? Mm. In this flight, we have Benchmark Full Proof at 0.176 P3, Old Grandad 114 at 0.232 P3, 1792 Full Proof at 0.400 P3, and Wild Turkey Rare Breed at 0.402 P3. And the prices are for our area. Now, Chad, I think it's interesting because a lot of people normally talk about uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed as being the best price for the proof. People say, you know, you get a high proof, it's around 40 bucks. I don't know, it's kind of hard to argue with, but I think this kind of puts that theory to the test. Like, yeah. can you get a similar proof for a less price or a better P3 rating? <laughs> uh, can that come out on top? I don't know. I think yeah. it's an interesting lineup and I'm excited to see. I want to see if the lowest P3 rating with that benchmark full proof can stand up to the highest price at the at the rare breed. Yeah, mm. so it's gonna be interesting. Let's get right into it with Bourbon A. This has a familiar nose. Oaky. Oaky and rich. some dark fruit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Brown sugar. I think I know mm. the familiarness now. I'm Maybe. like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Maybe. Try not to have that factor in as always. I know. Unbiased. Don't care who wins. That's right. Good nose though. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Ooh, that's spicy. Ooh. That puts a smile on my Ooh. face. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, first bourbon of the day. Grapey cherry finish. It does. It is it is hot. It brings a lot of heat with yes, it. Yes, there is uh. heat. Is this the highest proof one? Or one of the two that's the, the highest proof? Don't know, but it's up there. The heat is giving me a little less unpolished, I right, guess, yeah. I would say. Sure. But I think it has potential for a really good mouthfeel. Like it's, it's in there if you can get past the heat and mm -hmm. the finish is nice. I think this is one that you get used to after the sips. So what's going to, I think, hurt it is going to other ones that will compare that heat, where mm. if you were only sipping it all night, you'd be like, you'd, you'd get, get used to it, it. and you'd be like, ah, oh, cool, I'm having fun. Sure. <laughs> it's a good time. This is why I love to do the side-by-sides. Mm. More refined, more age, or the perception of age. Mm. Dark and oaky as well, but more syrupy, sugar, wood sugars. I'm a goofball. What? I literally was like, we don't have any Jim Beam in this flight. And then I look back there and I was like, oh. <laughs> well, not Jim Beam on the label. Made by Jim Beam. My nose was like, hello. <laughs> Love the nose. Bom, that one's bom, giving bom. me some oaky, nutty, <laughs> dark caramels and sugars. Same. Definitely backing down off the heat as compared to the first one. And a kind of a creamier mouthfeel, I uh, think. Yeah. Definitely easier on those taste buds on the, on the tongue. I do think it is lower proof. Not completely locking into that idea of what this is, but it does taste lower compared lower to proof. Uh, it, obviously, it'll be uh, at least 114 or above. It does taste 
like there's been some more time put into this one. Hmm. Yeah, that's just silky goodness. It is nice. Now, if I didn't know any better, <laughs> if I didn't know any better from the nose, I'd say, say it was brown format. I was thinking the same thing. It had that banana-ish, I said fruity, but I was really thinking banana, but I, I know that there's no brown this format smells in here. like a banana split, like a full, with the cherry and the whipped cream and then yeah. different ice creams and every, and the banana. Because you banana. can't have the banana split without a banana. It would just be a split. Yeah, this smells like a sundae or Ooh, something. Yes, it does. Okay, here we go. Very easy to sip. Oh, yeah. Oh, but on the finish, oh. that heat really comes up in a good way. Unlike A, that had the heat Just right the off the way. rip, right mm -hmm. off the bat. This is a slower, does it make sense to say a more gentle heat? Like it is. Spice on the tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not abrasive. It's not right. aggressive. It's appreciated. Mm -hmm. mm. Also kind of silky, more in the texture mm. as uh, Bourbon B over here. And it definitely has those fruity notes on the palate too. Uh -huh. Like I said, some like brighter mm. cherry, maybe some orange. Just those yes. like, again, I'm getting those citrus a little, pop. little banana, a little citrus pop. But it's more like a desserty ba banana, not right. so like not ripe fresh. banana, mm -hmm. like your, your brown form and stuff. Right, mm, enjoyable. Very. This D one smells dessert? the most interesting. Dessert or breakfast? What is it? Is it cinnamon rolls? It or smells like is this... raw batter, <sighs> like or dough, like raw biscuit dough or raw. This reminds me pancake of, batter of your. Um, this reminds me of your bread pudding. Oh. Uh huh. That's sort of the bourbon bread pudding, by the way. Yeah. Okay. I get the dessertiness. It, it's either yeah, breakfast or dessert. Um, cinnamon rolls though mm. could work either way. I like this nose. It is nice. Oh, not completely what I was wanting it to taste like. Mm. It tastes a little bit more youthful and dry. Yeah, it does. The nose really, I think, promises a little bit more, but I also wonder if maybe that bready doughiness is like the youth, the, like the the grains kind of, hmm. kind of coming forward. <laughs> I don't know what this is, and I'm I, now rethinking what I thought everything I'm, else was. I'm like, this on the finish tastes like the bean now. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I think I may have spoke too soon about what I thought was beam. I mean, we're not trying to. I'm not trying to. But always trying to hone my senses, never trying to guess Predict, to yeah. rig things. Um, it it has that nuttiness uh, mm. and sort of dryness quality. And it's also drinking a little lower proof too. Whoa. Okay. I'm. <laughs> we're just gonna wait for round two to figure this out. Who knows? Speaking of round two, we're gonna go to it here in a second, but we want to take a. Just a quick second to tell you about our home on the internet is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get this t-shirt, hat, Glencairns that we're drinking from, and more always coming soon. That's whiskeyambitions.com. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. That's where we exclusively release our barrel picks, a chance to participate in those barrel picks uh, after the episode exclusives, like another round with Chad and Sarah that we'll do after this and more. What a perfect time to thank today's sponsor, which is Shaker and Spoon. Take it away past Chad and Sarah. Well, Chad, it's getting closer to summer and that means I want refreshing cocktails. Yeah, so, you know, it just so happens that this month's box from Shaker and Spoon was called Summer Scotch 2. Now, Scotch, that's different for it's us. It's bourbon night. It is, it's bourbon night, so we don't normally do Scotch. We that's dabble right. a little. We dabble, we've we dabbled, we dabbled, yeah. But uh, the great thing about this is, as we often do, we put bourbon in just about every cocktail that we make. But we did make all of these with Scotch and with bourbon, the one that you're drinking actually has scotch. It is, this is the Pretty and Poppin', and I did use scotch in this one, and it is very delightful. Uh, this is a warm path, which is sort of a scotch take on an old fashioned. Yeah, I know you've heard us talk about it before. We love these because everything that you need is delivered mm. straight to your doorway. With everything but the booze. There you go, because we've all got the booze, but these are all three professionally made cocktails, enough to serve 12 people. So invite your friends. They're all originally made cocktails by professional bartenders. That's a great thing. And mm. if you want, like we do, you can experiment around. <laughs> with them as well. Or you well. can just drink them as is. But here's the best part. If you go to shakerandspoon.com and use coupon code BNIGHT, you can get $20 off your first order. Again, that's coupon code BNIGHT for $20 off professionally made cocktails delivered straight to your door. All right. Thanks, Chad and Sarah. All right. So we have taken some time. We let our palates reset. And now it is time for round two. Fight. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> okay. A, mm. bourbon A has sort of gotten more of a sweet tea tea and honey sort of I was gonna nose. say like a creme brulee, creme brulee. Like the caramelized sugars oh. on the top. See, Brulee'd, I guess is what See, we're running in different circles. Brulee'd sugar. But well, still has that sort of that grapey note. Yeah. yeah. I mean, last time the nose was my favorite thing about bourbon A, so mm -hmm. let's find out. Okay. Just as I sort of, just as I theorized, since we've gone through once, we're more acclimated, mm -hmm. I think, 
you know, we do these order random, so we don't know where we're gonna. I feel like this is one of the 125s, and I feel like it was a hell of a way to start. Yeah. But now that our palette is acclimated, it's not, it's as, not as abrasive yeah. as it was at first. If it's not 125, then man, mm -hmm. it's bringing some heat. No, I think it is. Yeah. It's still very strong, you know, very powerful in that heat way. But more inviting. This time. It is more inviting. I just wish it was, uh, I don't know, I guess it could achieve a better balance of not, of dialing back the heat, but still keeping the proof, you know? If this is what we're thinking it is, does that have to do with the low P3 rating, like a, a, a really low cost? Mm, mm, I don't know. know. Can't have everything, maybe. We'll maybe. see. Mm. Hello. The oak and the desserty, caramely. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. Smooth, velvety. <sighs> Perception of age. Mm. It almost smells like a candy bar. Like with, the, you know, like um, maybe like a Snickers with the peanuts, but there's also the caramel and the chocolate. Like it's not just peanuts. Any nougat in there? I get a little nougat. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Define nougat, Chad. Nougat. <laughs> Oh yeah. I just love the okay. richness of that one. Mm -hmm. All the flavors and it's bringing heat. You know, it, it kind of tingles on your tongue, but like the first one's really grasping you with the heat. Yeah. It's not yeah. quite there. Yeah. It builds a little bit towards the finish and mm -hmm. overall just pleasant. You know, I really like it. I uh, would like to update just on our guessing front that this is not the OGD 114. In our minds, we yeah, don't know. I think it's the rare breed, but. But Chad, that won't change how you feel I about know. it. It won't, but that's what I think it is. Still the fruity <laughs> yeah. dessert ice cream. How are you not brown foreman? Banana split. How are you not brown foreman? Uh, who have you been hanging around with? Is it them brown foreman boys? Yeah, it just smells like light brown sugar and fruits and mm. Mm. it's got a decent mouthfeel, you know? Yeah. Not super like creamy and silky and smooth, but it does have some silkiness to it. And so it's sort of like your snicker thing that you're saying? Mm -hmm. Specifically the, the peanut butter and chocolate part. I'm, I'm getting this. I mean, this is nutty, is what I'm trying to say. You think so? I think it's more nutty the second time around than it was first time. Well, a banana split does have yeah, the nuts, nuts sprinkled yeah, on top. I agree. So. But it does have a fruitiness. Fruit that, is the number one component of this. Uh, I wouldn't have, if we were describing these blind without tasting them, I wouldn't have put that down for any of those back there. Right. I know, right? But it is, it is pretty fruity. Like, yeah, I don't think, it is. I think it's undeniable. Biscuit dough. It is <laughs> Dessert. dough. Dessert. Cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon roll dough. Cinnamon roll dough, though. I mean, Whoa. it smells like yeasty, you know? Oh, like smells dough good. that's rising. I'm, I'm liking this nose. See, I don't know. I mean, I like it. I'm fine with it. But as compared to the others, it might be my least favorite nose. I like it, but it just smells doughy to me, hmm. which is fine. I like, you know, dough is nice. I like the, what it turns into. Okay. I get a bit uh, of that on the on mm -hmm. the palate too. Yep, yep. But I yep. like it. Dough rolls into nutty towards the finish. Yeah, there's a little bit of nuttiness in there. Dryer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Of the of the four, it might be the driest. It does have a little bit of dryness on the finish. A lot of barrel in this one. Mm, I like yeah, that. I, I do like that. Okay, well we've gone through these twice now, so now it's the part where we break apart from you guys. We, we break apart. We break apart, <laughs> break away, and we start tasting these uh, back to back that were not back to back before. We call that A-B testing. I think the rest of the world calls it A-B testing as well. Um, <laughs> Chad specifically called it. He I this term. invented that and the internet. False. Uh, so yeah, so we put these back to back that weren't back to back before, and then we ranked them. So we'll see you again at results time. Mm. Okay, Sarah, you know what time it is? It's results time. Not a particularly hard result. No, I feel yeah, like this easier. one was cake. This one was pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I did mm. not struggle on this one. And it's one of those rare cases where we have the same order. We do have the same order. Um, we ended up with the same now, ranking. If, if you want to see that A-B testing that gets sped up during the episode, consider becoming a patron. Uh, we do a thing called Another Round, and we actually air that part, and, and you kind of can hear our thought process as we go through it. If you like. Okay, well, since we have the same... Yes. Let's go with our last place. Or which... fourth place. Fourth place. Because let's be honest, no one's last They were all here. good. Fourth place, uh, we put Bourbon A. Bourbon A is... The benchmark. Wait, I knew that. Yes. <laughs> Why are you being shocked? I don't That's know. That's what we thought it was. I did, but I thought for some reason I got D and A mixed up DNA. in my brain. Yeah. So here's the thing about benchmark, flight fight effect. If you're just drinking a glass of benchmark, I feel like you will have a good time. You're like, I'm having fun. Um, this tastes good. But it's I mean, I compared to other ones that have more 
complexity and nuance and maybe some more age uh, or the appearance of age in it, you sort of pick apart the flaws mm. in, in Benchmark. It is $22 for a fifth of 125 proof. Right, so when you consider that, I still think it's a good value. And mm. I know the first time we had that as part of their like new series release, we were like, oh, dang, this is good. Yeah. And I still feel it that still way. Is. I still feel like it's got a good P3, right? It's got, got a good, a good P3, uh, yeah. price per proof. Mm -hmm. But, you know, stacked up against some of these others, like if you only had $25 to spend, you can buy this and plus tax and save whatever pocket they're at, the right. change, you there know? There you go. All right, third place for both of us was Bourbon D. Bourbon D is... The Old Granddad 114. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this one, I feel like, you know, it, it, it edged out the benchmark uh, a little bit, but it, it, it was fairly close. It's 114 proof, beat out a 125, but we were just tasting more, call it nuance or complexities in there. It just seemed to <sighs> sit a little bit better on the palate. I mean, for me, there was a few things I don't know, the decision between D and A mm -hmm. was a little bit more difficult. I feel like A had a lot of the flavors that I wanted, yeah. but it was really aggressive on the heat. And so for that reason, I put it last. Bourbon D, which was the 114, mm -hmm. honestly, I felt like didn't have as much flavor complexity as A, which was the benchmark, Sure. but it didn't have that aggressive heat. So for me, like it was just by a nose that it won out. I feel like what hurt A in the long run was we sort of saw that Buffalo Trace-ness of it. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, this could, if it aged longer, go it towards just... a Sag Junior or mm -hmm. you know something in, in that realm. So that ended up hurting it, tasting the Buffalo Trace-ness of it, but having those rough edges. Yeah. All right, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and reveal our first place. So you'll know what our second place is. But Which was Bourbon B. Bourbon B is... Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Okay, not the most expensive. Well, it's not the most expensive it has the highest P3 rating. So let's clarify that. The 1792 foolproof is the most expensive. We pay f around $50 for that. For the Wild Turkey Rare Breed, we pay around 47. So a little bit less. We ended up picking the highest P3 rating, but not the highest priced bottle. Ooh. By that logic, the highest P3 rating was the rare breed. Very closely, second highest P3 rating was the 1792. Which is our proof, second place. Which is our second place. Yes. Uh, and then let's see, third was the OGD 114, which came in third. And last was the benchmark foolproof. Yes, so. The cheapest. The, so the lowest P3, you're spending less on that lower P3 but rating. But so what, so that's bad then? Well, it just means you get what you pay for. Okay. Basically, in this experiment of these four, in our mm. personal opinion. The moral of this story seems yes. to be that proof is not everything. Proof is highest, not everything. Highest proof doesn't mean best because we had the two, uh, what do we have? The 125s came in second and fourth. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Also, the highest price doesn't right. always mean everything because mm -hmm. the highest price also came in second. That's right. Yeah, just looking at the highest proof, highest priced option on the shelves near you mm -hmm. won't necessarily get you the best. Now again, this is our opinion and sure. subjective sure. and all that stuff. Here's an idea. Since we talked about that Barton 1792, you know, Costco version, the Kirkland Signature, if you would like to see a drink this or that version Ooh. of it versus the 1792 foolproof, Blind? We've never done a drink this or that blind. Let us know down in the comments and uh, we might uh, do one of those if you guys Ooh, want to see something okay. like that. Because that one is 120 proof. Mm -hmm. You get the liter and it's $30 yeah. versus the, what, 50 bucks for, for 125. 125? Yeah. That is an interesting it's drink a, this or that. It's a very low P3 versus a higher P3. Ooh, we can continue. But both to, from the same distillery. Continue to test the P3 P3 theory. rating, yeah. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> But that's where we will leave it. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. If you have not subscribed to us, come on over. You can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.